Welcome to the online presentation, Copper in the Built Environment, Cleaner Surfaces by Design, provided by Global Brass and Copper. This presentation is protected by the U.S. and international copyright laws. Reproduction, distribution, display, and use of this presentation without written permission of GBC Metals LLC is prohibited. The learning objectives. At the end of this course, participants will be able to evaluate the potential for cleaner environments using bactericidal materials, assess the efficacy of bactericidal copper and compare it to other materials, understand the business case for incorporating bactericidal copper into the built environment, specify materials and products made from bactericidal copper, Here is the program outline. First, we will discuss the problem, infectious bacteria on environmental surfaces. Next, we will identify a solution, bactericidal copper alloys. Next, we will discuss the evidence, scientific research, regulation, and material comparison. Next, we will discuss the bottom line, financial implications. Then, we will talk about the products, commercial availability, and design considerations. And finally, taking action, specifying products made with bactericidal copper alloys. The problem infectious bacteria on environmental surfaces. According to research published in the Journal of Hospital Infection, we touch more than 90 things per hour. As a society, we are constantly touching surfaces as a part of our daily lives. Surfaces such as the ATM machine, stationary bikes at your local gym, or escalators in your local mall. The problem is that many of these services harbor bacteria that can make us sick. Bacteria such as Staphylococcus aureus, VRE, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, MRSA, E. coli, and Enterobacter aeruginis. Infectious bacteria is a growing concern in our communities, whether it be at healthcare facilities, in public buildings, in our schools, as a part of public transportation, in our office buildings, and even where we like to entertain. Our world is filled with germs. Bacteria are everywhere. In the bar graph illustrated here, bacteria levels were measured as a part of clinical research conducted by the Department of Defense and Grinnell Regional Medical Center in Grinnell, Iowa. These measurements were taken in medical surgical units and intensive care unit patient rooms. And as you can see, Many of these surfaces harbor large quantities of bacteria, such as sinks, toilet handles, and grab bars. Unfortunately, all of these surfaces, bacteria counts, exceed what's considered the high risk of transmission level, shown here by the red line at 250 colony forming units per centimeter squared. And these bacteria can survive on surfaces for months. 
Up to 80% of germs are transferred by touch and they spread rapidly across surfaces in the healthcare space. One of the ways in which we battle bacteria is by disinfecting. Unfortunately, from research, we know that cleaning can be incomplete. Cleaning does not always kill all bacteria. In this electron microphoto, you see live bacteria in a scratch of a stainless steel component. Even after cleaning, surfaces can harbor unsafe levels of microorganisms. In the two tables below, it illustrates that contaminated surfaces can exist in rooms that are cleaned. In the table to the left, MRSA was found in 18 out of 41 rooms after regular cleaning. In addition, VRE was found in 8 out of 37 rooms after regular cleaning. In the table on the right, after routine cleaning and after terminal cleaning, both bacteria levels exceed what we know is the high risk of transmission of 250 colony forming units. And what are we doing in between cleanings? Unfortunately, according to research, surfaces quickly become recontaminated after cleaning. In the graph shown below, after hospital bed rails were cleaned with two different types of disinfectants, within hours the bacteria levels returned to the pre-cleaned levels on the hospital bed rails. Another tool that we can use to fight off bacteria is through proper hand washing. Frequent hand washing is a common means to overcome transfer of bacteria. It requires constant diligence, but unfortunately it is not always effective. Hand washing appliance is less than 50% according to some research that has been conducted. Environmentally acquired infections are a part of our daily lives and are consistently in the news. But the real concern that we should have revolves around antibiotic resistant superbugs that could kill millions and millions of people annually. The impact of hospital-acquired infections is significant. Thousands die each year from bacteria in places we think are safe, like hospitals. Approximately 75,000 deaths occur annually due to hospital-acquired infections. This is more than heart failure, breast cancer, and alcohol-related incidents. One in 25 people contract an infection during their stay within a hospital while being treated for another illness. This costs approximately $45 billion annually for the additional days needed to stay while being treated for a hospital-acquired infection. And it is ranked number one most dangerous places to work, which is two times higher than the national average, according to the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. To this point, we've learned that as a society, we are constantly touching surfaces. And those surfaces can harbor infectious bacteria that make us sick, in some cases resulting in death. Therefore, it is necessary for us to follow a path 
to cleaner environments. This is a multifaceted challenge in front of us requiring a synergistic approach. We've also learned that hand hygiene is not always followed, but is absolutely necessary. We've also learned that cleaning can be incomplete, but also is absolutely necessary. What is the next step in the path in cleaner environments? A solution, bactericidal copper alloy materials. Copper is widely used in a number of different applications. Instruments, coinage, statues, architecture, and electronics. There are perceptions of copper that exist. When you think of copper, you probably think of this. In each one of these applications, 100% copper was the material of choice. As you can see, there is significant tarnishing or patina that has occurred over a period of time. In some instances, this is the desired outcome, but in others, it is undesirable. However, there are ways to mitigate this natural occurrence or tarnishing of copper. Copper can be alloyed with other metals to enhance its properties, such as strength, color, corrosion resistance, machinability, and wear resistance. Specifically, copper can be alloyed with nickel to improve its anti-tarnish properties. Copper is highly recyclable. Copper is one of the most recycled and recyclable of all metals. Copper products can be composed of up to 100% recycled content. Copper is a sustainable solution. Products made with copper pose no risk to public health. Copper is an essential nutrient found in a variety of foods, such as seafood, nuts, oils, and meats. Copper contains no VOCs, PVC, phthalates, or other pollutants. In addition, no sealants, glues, or adhesives are used as a part of the manufacturing process. Copper can be used to build green buildings. Copper can contribute to lead points through building energy efficiency. There are three areas in which copper can count towards lead points. Innovation and design process through recycled content. Material and resources through the envelope, roofs, plumbing, accents, and fixtures of a building. And finally, energy and atmosphere through the use of passive solar walls, high efficiency wiring, and systems. Copper can come in a variety of forms. It's available in sheet, strip, foil, tube, 
rod, and ingot. In addition, it's easy to fabricate. It can be formed, stamped, cut, cast, forged, welded, and brazed. It comes in a variety of finishes and can be brushed, polished, or custom finished. And it's also easy to mark. It can be etched or marked. Copper alloys are easy to clean. Standard cleaning products and protocols can still be used. Disinfection products will not harm copper alloys when used properly, such as alcohols, bleaches, quad ammonias, ammonium chloride, phenol and ammonia, hydrogen peroxide, steam, or formaldehyde. For remediation, a citric acid-based cleaner or copper polish is recommended. The most important property of copper and copper alloys is its bactericidal benefits. Bactericidal copper is EPA registered to kill bacteria. There are a number of different mechanisms in which copper kills bacteria, and one of those is through its copper ions. Copper ions on the surface are recognized as an essential nutrient and enter the cell. A lethal dose of copper ions interferes with normal cell functions and membrane integrity. Ultimately, copper ions impede cell respiration and metabolism, in some cases causing DNA damage and killing the bacteria. Now let's review the evidence. Rigorous EPA testing was conducted on a copper alloys at a third-party facility. Three tests were conducted. The first was an efficacy test. The second was a wear test. And the third was a repeated contamination test on these six bacteria. The efficacy test is illustrated here. As you can see from the graph, stainless steel and copper were both inoculated with millions of colony forming units of bacteria, in this particular case MRSA. After two hours, the copper exhibits the ability to kill 99.9% .9 of bacteria, while the stainless, even after 360 minutes, still harbors massive loads of bacteria. Here, the repeated contamination test is illustrated. As you can see, copper and stainless were re-inoculated eight times. Each inoculation, 640,000 colony forming units. And after a 24 hour period, without any cleaning in between inoculations, copper exhibited the ability to continuously kill bacteria while the stainless significantly gained bacteria over that same 24 hour period. This is the most important test of the three EPA tests conducted. Copper is an EPA registered to make public health claims and by contrast bacteria thrives on stainless steel surfaces. Let's discuss and compare copper alloys versus coatings and additives. As previously shown through the EPA testing, 
Copper alloys are the only surface with EPA public health registration and can make public health claims that copper alloys kill infectious bacteria that pose a threat to human health. Coatings and additives, however, can make an antimicrobial claim marketed under treated article exemption, which means that the antimicrobial agent only protects the product itself from bacteria that cause odor, staining, and degradation. It does not protect you or I, and it does not kill bacteria. Products listed under the EPA treated article exemption are not proven, have not been tested nor recognized by the EPA to protect people against disease causing bacteria and cannot make health claims. The graph below shows the efficacy test and compares copper, stainless, and three antimicrobials and their ability to kill bacteria. As previously shown, copper kills 99.9% .9 of bacteria within two hours, while the stainless and three antimicrobials show no bactericidal benefit. This is a very important distinction that needs to be made. That copper alloys kill bacteria, while coatings and additives only protect the surfaces themselves from odors, stains, and do not kill bacteria on contact. This is becoming more critical as historically, healthcare systems have specified coatings and additives or antimicrobials as a method to mitigate bacteria within their environment. Unfortunately, because of their performance, they do not provide any benefit to killing bacteria. In a recent announcement made by Kaiser Health Systems in October of 2015, the health system found little evidence that 13 items including included on its ban list are actually effective infection prevention tools and therefore have banned them from their system. Here are the 13 antimicrobials being banned at Kaiser Health. To this point, we've learned that copper alloys have been rigorously tested by the EPA and can make claim to kill 99.9% .9 bacteria within two hours and continuously kill bacteria. Now let's move from the lab space to the clinical space. Clinical trials funded by the U.S. Department of Defense were conducted at three facilities. Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York, Medical University of South Carolina in Charleston, and the Ralph H. Johnson VA Hospital in Charleston. Several services were retrofitted and tested over a three-year period. These included the chair arm, the overbed table, the bed rail, the IV pole, and data input device. As you can see from the bar chart below, the clinical trials support the EPA claims. Specifically, the incumbent materials identified in green had significantly higher bio burden values than the retrofitted copper products. In some instances, there is a reduction of burden in excess of 95%, such as the bed rails. It is also very important to know that there are over 100 peer-reviewed and published papers that supports the benefits of bactericidal copper.
Now let's talk about the bottom line or the financial implications. Let's first start by talking about the cost of copper. Many times I get the question, isn't copper expensive? And my answer, no, not really. Since 2011, copper has reduced in value almost 40% and continues to decline. In addition to that, nickel values have also declined to the point of historical lows. Now let's talk about the relative cost of copper. In some cases, copper is one of many components of the product itself. As an example, the lever of a door lock system, the rail of a stretcher bed, or the grab bar of a transit system. In other cases, it's the product itself, such as a sink or a cabinet pull. Depending on how the copper is used and whether, it's not, whether or not it's a component, different premiums may apply. In the case of the stretcher bed where it's a component, the premium would be approximately 10%. But in the case where it's the product itself, such as a sink, the premium would be 30%. However, the bactericidal benefit can justify the premium that's paid. As we think about the financial implications and how bactericidal copper can improve the cleanliness of the healthcare environment, we need to keep in mind healthcare's objective, which is delivering against the triple aim. The triple aim includes three components, population health, the experience of care of the patient, and the per capita cost. Bactericidal copper delivers against the healthcare's triple aim in each one of these areas. Relative to population health, it transcends hospitals. Bactericidal copper can be used in schools, in offices, in other public spaces, ultimately improving community health. The second area is the experience of care. Bactericidal copper reduces bio burden and the risk of transmission, and its use within the healthcare environment can also improve community recognition of improved care. And finally, bactericidal copper can help reduce direct costs, federal penalty avoidance, and the impact of additional cleaning required because of infectious outbreaks. Now let's talk about healthcare financial risks. It is estimated that the hospital-acquired infection financial risk for a 250-bed hospital is $26.4 million annually. The first component of this are the direct costs to treat hospital-acquired infections, which is equal to $21 million on an annual basis. This information is uh, indicated to the left in the first table. Patients that enter a hospital and have to be treated for a hospital-acquired infection on average stay just over 19 additional days and must be cared for at a, an additional cost of approximately $43,000. For a 250-bed hospital system times 39 patients stays per bed per year times a 5% hospital-acquired infection rate times the $43,000 per patient equals $21 million. The second component is the Center for Medicaid and Medicare Services penalties and non-reimbursement of $3.8 million, which is summarized in the table uh, below. There are four components, primarily. The first is infection reporting, which could be a penalty of up to a million dollars. Readmission rate, which could be a penalty of up to $1.5 million. Being in the bottom quartile of infections, which is the penalty up to $500,000. And then value-based purchasing score, which could be a penalty of up to $750,000, for a total roughly of $3.8 million of penalty and non-reimbursement based on those performance measures. The final piece of the $26.4 million 
financial risk is the additional cleaning that would be required of $1.7 million if the hospital system were to double its cleaning efforts of full-time employees. That does not include any of the products required for disinfecting the hospitals. Therefore, the 21 million plus the 3.8 million plus the 1.7 million equates to a $26.4 million financial risk for a 250 bed hospital system. Now let's talk about implementing the costs of a suite of products made with copper, which can be as low as $2,500 per room. These products could include patient room door lever sets, patient room bathroom door sets, drawer and cabinet poles, grab bars, IV pole, light switches and plates, keyboards, hospital bed pendants, and an overbed table. So let's put these costs into context. The first relative to a new build of a 300 bed hospital system with an excess budget of $400 million. If each one of those rooms was outfitted with copper at the cost of two and a half thousand per room, a total of $1.5 million would be incurred in cost. And if you put that in perspective to the 400 million of budget for the new build, that would be 0.04% of the total cost, insignificant to the total cost of the hospital itself. The second area of context would be the room equipment that needs to be purchased for a particular room. That could be in excess of $150,000. A bed could be up to 60000 of that. The different monitors could be up to 15000 and an infusion pump could cost you 5000 For a room outfitted with copper at $2,500 and being conservative of equipment within the room at $100,000, that's less than 2.5% of the total cost of the room. Again, a very insignificant number relative to the total cost. Incrementally, cost is negligible to costs hospitals incur on a daily and annual basis. Now let's see the results of our healthcare business case. We earlier defined the estimated financial risk for a 250 bed hospital system is $26.4 million on an annual basis. There would be a one-time cost to install bactericidal copper of $250,000 on an annual basis amortized over a five year period. Now keep in mind that for a 250 bed hospital system at 39 patient stays per bed per year and a 5% hospital acquired infection rate, a 250 bed hospital system would have approximately 487 uh, patients acquiring an infection in that particular year. Of that 487, only five people not getting an infection is the equivalent to the total cost to install bactericidal copper. Cost of bactericidal copper equals a 1% reduction in hospital acquired infections. There is also the education business case that can be made. Student illness is a serious problem around the United States. Approximately 22 million school days are lost annually to the common cold. School districts unfortunately lose state and federal funding for missed student days. An example of this is below with the Centralia School District in California. A daily cost per student is just under $52, or an annual cost of just over $7,000. And this assumes 20 students miss one day of school at each of the eight schools in the district. Ultimately, the district itself 
on an annual basis is losing just over $1 million. In addition, it is also uh, known through research that chronic absenteeism is associated with lower academic performance and achievement gaps. Plus, if we think about the educator illness and their contribution to the business case, 36% of teachers are absent greater than 10 days of a school year. A minimum of $4 billion is spent annually in substitute teacher and administrative costs. Teacher absence can also be tied to student performance. Lower performance can equal less funding. Bactericidal copper kills bacteria responsible for illnesses and can be incorporated into the educational system to help reduce costs both from a student illness perspective and an educator perspective. The third case I would like to share is the fitness business case. The Paul W. Aarons Fitness Center, located in Grinnell, Iowa, rebuilt their facility with bactericidal products in October of 2014. These included dumbbells and attachments, light switches, cabinet pulls, grab bars, and faucet levers. The result was a 116% increase in their membership over a very short period of time. Their original membership at 275 in October of 2014 has risen to 594 in November of 2015 and is, continues to climb. This is due to increased satisfaction and uh, based on member comments, they like the clean environment of the new facility and they like how the copper products look and feel. Where is bactericidal copper, you ask? Well, products made with bactericidal copper have been installed in 37 states, plus DC, and 13 countries, with more than 175 known installations. These include Pullman Regional Hospital in Washington, Kaiser Permanente and LA Kings Training Center in California, Chicago Prostate Cancer Center in, in Illinois, Grinnell Regional Medical Center in Grinnell, Iowa, Shriners Hospital in Texas, Cancer Treatment Centers of America in Atlanta and Phoenix, Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center and the Pingree School in New York, Winnie Palmer Hospital and the Breakers Hotel Resort in Florida, Berkeley Medical Center, Mayo Clinic Hospital and Regency Hospital, U.S. Olympic Training Center, and many, many more. Now let's show you some products, commercially availability, and design considerations. There are over 20 manufacturers offering bacteriocidal products as a part of their commercial lines today. These products include door hardware. light switches and wall plates,
sinks and countertops. Cabinet hardware. Bathroom accessories. Rails and grab bars. Keyboards and data input devices. Casework. Medical equipment. Incubators and biological safety cabinets. Fitness equipment from Black Iron Strength. Mass transit applications. Modular buildings. Let's take the final step and that being taking action. Specifying products made with bactericidal copper. Specifying bactericidal copper first starts with a recommendation. Included descriptive language to clarify intent and ensure inclusion of designated products and materials in the project. The next would be defining the materials, specifically bactericidal copper alloy touch surfaces and products. Defining public health registration with the EPA under Section 3 of the Federal Insecticide, Fungicide, and Rodenticide Act, or FIFRA defining that it's a solid and uncoated. Next would be the submittals. The first, qualifications, that the manufacturer has EPA registration number and a copy of the EPA product labeling. Second, certifications, the manufacturer's certification of wear resistance and bactericidal durability. Instructions, that being the manufacturer's installation and cleaning recommendations. Product finishes should also be specified in color, finish, and identification. Some executional guidance relative to cleaning. Number one, clean exposed copper surfaces and remove substances blocking metal surface. From a training standpoint, instruct designated personnel of proper cleaning procedures. And from a maintenance standpoint, a supplement to standard cleaning practices does not replace normal cleaning. And now the wrap up and some key takeaways. Number one, evaluate the potential for cleaner environments using bactericidal materials. 75,000 deaths occur annually 
due to hospital acquired infections, costing $45 billion to treat those infections. It provides an incremental continuous benefit. Number two, assess the efficacy of bactericidal copper and compare it to other materials. Bactericidal copper continuously kills 99.9% .9 of bacteria that cause infections. Copper can make public health claims. Incumbent material exemption materials cannot. Number three, understand the business case for incorporating bactericidal copper into the built environment. Bactericidal copper is a low risk, high return investment for built environments where control of infectious bacteria is desired. And finally, number four, specify materials and products made from bactericidal copper. A set of recommendations for how to include bactericidal copper in specifications was provided. On behalf of Cuvero Bactericidal Copper Surfaces and Global Brass and Copper, I'd like to thank you for your attention. This is the conclusion of the online presentation.